everyone. Hey guys. I don't know why I'm so bright. You <laughs> I are. think it's you're very bright. The new camera that I'm using. I love it, it is. I can't believe it's the end of June and it's the very last day of June. It and is. It like whizzed by. It really did. We. I was talking to a friend of mine earlier and I was like, next month is not only my birthday, but it's my sister's and my son's birthday. Wow. Like, Alex turns one at the end of July and I can't, I, I, I don't even know how I can, how I feel like all of the feels. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you were just pregnant just yesterday. <laughs> right. Like I'm like, I feel like I just brought him home yesterday, let alone I've kept a human being alive for almost a year. That's, I feel like it should, like I should have like an achievement unlocked or like a trophy or a ribbon or yeah. something. Yeah, I mean, he's still breathing. You're, you've done your job. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Only like, you know, 18 more years of this. <laughs> you mean a thousand more years? <laughs> yes, yes, basically. 100%. Hey, guys, look at all you people. We've got Julie and Lisa, Jill. Hi, Megan. Hello, Renee. Amber. We've got another Amber, Mary, Summer, and the Cozy Reader Life. Hello. So we can recap the book, but while we recap it, I did already peek at Courtney's Goodreads rating, but let us know what yes. you do with this book. Yeah. And just as a recap, we're reading, um, recapping Lending a Paw, the bookmobile cat mysteries yes by Lori cass i believe yeah i keep calling it the catmobile series i don't know why i mean that's basically eddie is the uh star of the 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 show so yeah. i mean that's Pretty not much. that's not 100 percent wrong yeah so do you want me to start or do you want to start i don't care um i can i can start so okay. we have um we have our main character who is a librarian, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. If I hadn't have been a teacher, I would have been a, um, a librarian. Hold on, stop eating my flowers. Cleo was trying to eat all of my lavender. She was like, I just wanna, I just wanna eat this. Okay, so um, we follow Minnie, um, the librarian, and she has uh, recently moved to um, live in the town where her aunt lives and to become a, um, the ex I think it's the executive director, no, it's the assistant director of the little library. Um, she rescues this kitty cat and ends up calling him Eddie. She rescues him at a um, at a um, cemetery, which is a little weird, but kind of cool at the same time. Um, so she is deciding that she wants to have a bookmobile um, for the library. She wants to be able to reach out to those rural towns that um, won't necessarily be able to come to the library. And so she actually enlists the help of this older, richer gentleman. Um, and they, he ends up gifting, I think it's like $250,000 mm -hmm. to the library for the bookmobile to be, um, built and commissioned and everything. So the book sort of starts out with her waking up and getting ready for this big voy first voyage of the bookmobile. And she tells Eddie, you know, you got to stay here. You've got to make sure you stay here. So she walks to her library and she's getting everything done and she's getting her checklist and she starts her drive and her very first drive she's on her way and she realizes Eddie has hitched a ride on the bookmobile mm -hmm. and um, at one of her final stops uh, she realizes that 
all of the people that said that they were going to be there aren't going to be there. So she decides that she's going to do just her final checks of the books and everything. And then at the last moment, Eddie decides to run out of the bookmobile. She starts chasing him. They end up on this sort of farm land, um, farmhouse. And she ends up following Eddie into the house, finding a man dead. And the person who she found that was dead was, oh my goodness, his name escapes me. The victim? Yes. Uh, oh. Stan. Stan. So she finds Stan uh, bludgeoned and shot on mm -hmm. the floor dead. And she... Um, at first, it seems like she might be a sort of a person of interest because she got a lot of money from Stan. And then they find out that Stan has actually uh, put the library in as a um, benefactor in his will. So then the executive director of the library starts thinking that maybe the library is not going to get the money. And many, um, one of her workers at the library is actually a cousin of Stan and is now a person of interest because she had asked him for some money so that they could go and buy a house. And he rudely said no. And she um, wrote a very, very angry letter back, basically threatening him. And so the police are looking into her and then she begs Minnie to sort of figure out what happened to Stan for real so that she can stop being a person of interest. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm trying to like remember all, all of the things. There were a lot of characters. Cause you know me, yes. I always write down all the names. Her name was yes. Holly Turpening. Yes. <laughs> Holly. And, um, she didn't want her husband to figure out that she had asked Stan for money. And so she asked Minnie to figure it out for her. Um, Minnie, like, I don't know. There was, there, there were a lot of people in this one um, because we also then go to like her aunts who sort of runs like a bed and breakfast sort of like boarding house mm -hmm. for people um, who on the side tries to um, tries to hook up sort of or be a love guru for the people on in in her boarding house um, Somehow it seems as though uh, her aunt has a connection to Stan as well as a very, very rich lady. There, mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who did not like Stan, um, including his six sisters, who we find gets swindled out of their family farm. And he makes millions off of um, the money that he gets from that deal. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have any like... But he kind of, they said later he makes them whole and they were like, oh, she yeah. goes to investigate and she, they're like, whatever, that's so old news. So it yeah. seems like it's a big thing, but then when she talks to him, it's not. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing too is the matchmaking was kind of weird. There was this couple, Dina is 25, Quincy is 50, nothing yeah. against age gaps. And I was like, what kind of matchmaker is this? Well, she was trying not to get them to matchmake. She actually had two other people at the boarding that were that she was trying to match make them th with that would have been more their age range and but the 50 year old and the 25 year old were hitting it off and that's one of the things that her aunt was upset about because she didn't want them together basically oh i thought she did they didn't so just in case you're wondering they didn't end up together anyway no no <laughs> so yeah. they were they ended up with more age appropriate people Yes. Um, so that was okay. And then there was this whole like sort of side story, romance story where she has this neighbor. So her aunt, she lives with her aunt and then she has enough money to buy this houseboat, which I don't even know why you'd buy a houseboat in. This is a cold part of the country. I don't remember where, but it freezes in the winter. So she could only live there in the summer. And then in fact, all the other people who own the houseboats near her at that particular. They don't come in until the summer. Yeah, and so she has to go back to her aunts anyway in the winter to go live. So it was very, it seemed like a very poor investment, in my opinion. But mm -hmm. she has a neighbor named Rafe. And Rafe is like, I guess, the school principal. He's supposedly really smart and educated, but he comes off as like this bumbling kind of idiot. Mm -hmm. And so he ends up cutting his hand, doing some home repairs or something on his boat. So she's like, we need to go to the hospital it's like clearly going to be infected. And so she takes him to the hospital. The ER doctor is really cute. And 
and she likes him, but it's like, a t- I guess it's like far away or something. Yeah, it was so, like 45 minutes away yeah. is the, was like the closest hospital yes. yeah so then they go back and then he later i don't know if he like does it to help her out or something but he doesn't take any of the antibiotics because i guess even as a principal he doesn't understand how antibiotics work so she's like that clearly looks like it's going to get infected and you're going to lose your arm we have to go back so they go back to the er again go to the same doctor and then he like like his her friend helps finagle getting his phone number and they end up going out on a date yes and the date was super super awkward because it seemed like everybody and their mother wanted to talk to Minnie during the date. And Mm -hmm. like, even when they decided to go on the second date, um, they did it like outside of town where like no one would be able to like introduce themselves and everything. I'm seeing that a lot of people gave, um, gave it like three stars. So let me go up here. Um, If anybody's wondering, I gave it three stars. I read this in 2018 and so I thought you know what maybe maybe my my mind will change um and so I reread it and it's it's still a three stars for me personally Eddie is bae though like I love Eddie as a character um but Summer gave it three uh the cozy reader life gave it three Lisa gave it four Julie gave it four April gave it three, Megan three. So it looks like a lot of like threes, fours, three and a halves. Um, uh, this is my first book club. I wasn't able to read this one, but I'm excited to join next month. Awesome, Taylin. Um, but what did you end up giving it, Lisa? I gave it a four, but honestly, only because if you looked at my uh, what I read in June, it was like all twos. They were so mm. awful. So then when I read this, I was like, I guess it's not that bad. <laughs> I yeah, guess I'll yeah. Give it a four. But yeah, yeah, just to jump ahead to the end though. So the killer was actually a temporary chef at her best friend's restaurant, which is the place she went on her date. Which obviously, if you know, if you go on a date to your best friend's place, she's going to be like all up in your business, right? And then plus, the cook was the killer, so he was like all up in her business trying to figure out if she figured mm-hmm. out it was him. And so anyway, so he had like a fake name uh, that he was going by and that's why they couldn't make the connection. And his wife had left him. And so he was like in debt and he really needed the money. And so that's why he killed Stan, right? Yeah. So he killed Stan also because he's related to him. So it, he was, Stan was his uncle, um, like his great uncle. He Apparently, Stan's sisters, they all had, like, naming conventions for their kids. So, like, all of them started with S's or all of them started with T's or whatever. Oh, right. Um, And Larry had gone by Larry instead. And so she didn't make the connection that Larry was indeed, like, a relative of Stan's. And so he had asked Stan basically for money. Um, and Stan was like, no, you've got to, money's easy to come by. You've got to earn it on your own um, kind of, kind of way. I, I like the idea of the bookmobile series. Um, A friend of mine, she absolutely loves it. And she was like going on and on and on about like the newest book in the series and how amazing it was. And I totally, totally, I I love that. And I hope you guys like continue, but I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to like continue the series I, i'm definitely not going to continue even though i give it a four but i think part of it too is like towards the end you're like ready for the book to be over you're like i totally would have never figured out it was the cook and then at the same time she gets kidnapped by the cook and put in yes. this place and you're like oh my gosh why are we reading two chapters of her trying to break free like break free yes. already <laughs> like what is well, taking you so long <laughs> and i just I, I feel like if you're going to kidnap someone like i understand that he was just trying to like shut her up so that he could leave and get out of town mm-hmm. and everything but i always really really like that part of a cozy or a part of a mystery where like the bad guy or the murderer and the protagonist sort of like have it out with each other or Mm -hmm. like they have that moment where he's like talking about why he did or why she did what she did. And like, that was not there at all. (laughs) I felt as as though I was like denied that. And it, and I, I wanted to have that in, in my life. Well, plus I honestly thought because they make a whole big deal about how she's so short because she's 4'11 and they even name her Minnie, which is mm-hmm. kind of like 
awful. And then at the very end, I was like, when she was stuck in that cabin, I was like, okay, Minnie is going to like shimmy through some tiny yeah. little opening and get out. And it's going to be great that she's tiny, but she doesn't. <laughs> right? No, like, instead she tries to climb all the way to the top to get out of this big window. Right. That yes. doesn't make any sense. Um, so, yeah. I was like, maybe she'll go through like a secret dog door or something. Right. Like something. Oh, no. That would have been that would have been great. Um, Ivy says that she gave the she gave it a four stars because uh, she's easier on first books in the series. <laughs> a lot of times I'm easier on the first book of the series because mm -hmm. that's where they're building the world and everything like that. And I I tried. I I, I read the book twice, so I don't think it's going to change. I give it a three because I think the series has potential. Don't listen to the audiobook. I listened earlier in the month, and if I remember, they pronounce Mackinac wrong. I mean, I listened to both the audiobook and I read the actual Kindle. And I kind of feel like you, because you read it twice. I was like, no, it's still like a three and a half, four. Like, I'm not going to continue. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, the audiobook didn't bother me. Like, okay. Sometimes they, I'm like, oh, there was something screechy, but it was fine. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't heard the audiobook, so I'm not yeah. I'm not quite sure. Amber Scott says I didn't guess the killer. Um, hello, no captions, but I can read comments. At least I'm here to see what we are talking about. Do we have captions? I don't think on live streams you can do captions. Oh, okay. Sorry, Carolyn. Uh, yeah, afterwards it, it there there will be there. I hope that the audio doesn't say Mackinac instead of Mackinac. I don't think I'd even notice because I listed things at three and a half speed. <laughs> like it would have just in one ear and out. Yeah. I enjoyed it and have read additional books in the series. I'll continue it the rest. I listened to the audiobook and they do pronounce mispronounce words, but I still enjoyed it. You know, April, if you three and a half that, you won't even notice. It's just yeah, weird. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I've seen too, like sometimes on Goodreads, I'll look at books and readers will give them even a two star and still say, I will give the second book another chance because yeah. they're so excited about the premise or the hope that it will get better. Like I feel like readers are very forgiving. Very, very much so. Like one of the things is I'm always willing to give somebody a, a second chance. Um, mm -hmm. Even if I didn't like one part of their, their writing or something like that. I don't, I think that it just didn't move fast enough for me or there weren't enough like real mystery elements to it I guess is what like I'm really feeling I feel like yeah I feel like sh I really wanted to know more about the ant and mm -hmm. that like that area in there but then it felt like um it felt like her whole entire aunt was sort of like dropped in but it was not really meaningful mm -hmm. in a way like she, her, she finally talks to her aunt after you know what seems like forever of not really talking to her to figure out why she's acting so weird and then she finds out that stan used to be a board like a boarder at her aunt's place and it just i feel like if the if her aunt's place is going to be more a part of the story i really wish i would have been like been able to glimpse into it more than just the few times that it was there. Otherwise it just felt as though it was fluff, like not really there to like push the story along. I totally agree. And I also think the book wasted a lot of time trying to make her more likable, like with the whole little kid that has cancer. And like, first mm -hmm. of all, I really don't like when they put the C word inside books. It's just like, unless it's like really germane to the plot or the story, it just is kind of depressing. And so yeah. they just go on this whole tangent with the cat visiting the cancer kid. And so, and it has nothing to do with the mystery or helping you to find clues that spark her memory or something about what's going to a suspect or something. As a teacher, like, Putting, putting that little girl in, my heart was like, because huh, like just thinking of my students. Um, and so like that part didn't, didn't bother me too much, but I can totally understand where that sort of like takes away from some of the escapism of the reading that Cozy's mm -hmm. normally does. Um, but I don't know. I feel like, I feel like, I don't know, there, 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 there could have been more to the characters, like more depth. I think I have, right. I have too high expectations that there's going to be more depth in all of it yeah and she didn't really seem to like her boss that much and she seemed mm -hmm. to be really annoyed that he was so 
worried about the budget, which I totally get. He's in charge of everything. He's paying her salary. I'm sure she wants a raise and a bonus. So I don't know why she's like so mad that he's worried yeah. about finances. Yeah. That's no. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, agree. It took a while to get going and I never really feel like felt like there were any likely candidates. Mm -hmm. The ants, the ant gets more into each series. That's really good to know. Um, other than Eddie, there's no characters that I really liked. See, I agree. Like there wasn't a character that I was like, I want to root for them. Mm -hmm. Like there wasn't someone that I was, I just loved. I love the cat. And that's the reason I love the series. <laughs> the cat. Ivy started another book in the series because I thought it would be fun to read a 4th of July mystery, but the crime takes place right away on the 4th of July and there's Aww. no holiday atmosphere. Bummer. That stinks. <laughs> It took a while for me to get into and bummer Ivy. Yeah, that really, really stinks whenever, especially because I know the book that you're talking about, um, like the cover is very red, white, and blue and makes it mm -hmm. seem as though there's like, you know, going to be fireworks and things like that. And it really stinks yeah. if there's no holiday atmosphere in it at all. Yeah, it's like a Christmas book I read. I can't remember what, I think it was a romance. And all of a sudden they just jumped ahead to New Year's Eve. And I was like, but wait. <laughs> yeah, but, but you're supposed to be holiday, like Christmas Eve. Yeah, change your back yeah. these stockings. Also, I don't even know if the author has a cat because she was like, she kept feeding the cat like bread and pizza and yes. they don't eat cars. <laughs> yeah, she actually does have multiple cats, uh, but agreed. Yeah, no, my, my, my cats do not eat bread or... Yeah. Or anything like that, like nay nay. The cat gets excited when I bring home sushi, but yeah. not pizza. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she gave it pizza, so that was a little odd. Anything else we want to talk about in this book? I have a lot of notes because there were so many characters. Yes, there were. I did like her best friend. Um, her best friend was fun. Oh, the restaurant, yeah. yeah. Was yes, cute. she was. She was feisty. Man, the, it, a lot of times it seems like I want the side characters to be the, the main characters and like for the <laughs> protagonist that the author actually wrote to like not be a character. The other thing that was weird too is, so her friend Holly asked for her help, but then doesn't really kind of follow up or give her any extra information. She's just like, help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never really comes back in again. And for some reason she's like, I really have to help Holly. And I'm like, why? Holly doesn't even like acknowledge you or say hello. And mm -hmm. yeah. and the whole Holly spilling the coffee and not cleaning up, that didn't make any sense either. <laughs> no. And another thing that like um the surfer girl that mm -hmm. kept coming into the bookmobile. Oh, yeah. Why did she cry? I don't understand. Anybody who knows the answer, I don't know why she cried when she thought the surfer girl was gonna take the cat. Yeah. Well, I think that she she rescued Eddie. So she was afraid that because the girl kept looking at him like she knew him. I think that she thought that because she doesn't know where Eddie came from. So right. she was afraid that Eddie might be that surfer girls and that she was going to ask for him back. Just because the surfer girl was looking at him. Just That's kept it. looking at oh. him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it ended up being that the surfer girl likes to breed certain animals. And she was looking at his breed and was wondering if he would be able to be a breeder and she's like no he's fixed i thought she breeds dogs it she like was but then they said that they were going to like expand their business oh okay <laughs> that was odd uh summer says i have a cat that eats anything but pickles oh wow what kind of cat yeah what kind of cat <laughs> summer uh, Annie, I gave it a three just because I love the bookmobile setting. I feel a bit of empathy for her trying to keep that going when her boss is strict about budget concerns. Um, also, didn't it seem like the budget could have been fixed really easily if she had just gone back to Stan and been like, we also need operating expenses. Yeah. Like, <laughs> because he seems care. to be very, very giving when it came to the library. Yeah. I did like the weird that weird guy in the diner. Are you talking about the one that uh, ended up having, like, was going blind towards the end of the book? Oh, the one that ran into the building? Yes. Are you? Is that who you're talking about, Mary? I think probably. That was also a weird side story that had nothing to do with anything. Summer, I did think her automatically thinking the surfer girl would take her cat was odd. 
I think because she was so violently, emotionally upset. She was like crying and yeah. bawling and like hugging the cat. Mm -hmm. Mary, yes, that's the guy. I I, I liked him too. Um, I loved the fact that, I don't know, there, there just seemed to be so many side stories going on. But I did love the fact that the reason why he was reading so many books so fast was because mm -hmm. he was afraid he wasn't going to be able to read the rest of his life. And I loved the, the little little love between the um the waitress like i'd be cool with a book about them too like there were just so many like different things going on that yeah pretty much oh somebody said she has a tabby cat oh <laughs> amber i love the setting too we have one where we live since we live in the middle of nowhere around us so we are near town but it's all farms around us and woods that's super cool nice yeah, I I was really digging this because at that time I was like, like when I first read it in 2018, I was obsessed with bookmobiles. Like I thought that they were the coolest, most niftiest things ever. And so mm -hmm. I was super excited to read it. And then, and and then then I it wasn't like my favorite. Um, April, there were a lot of side stories that I would have liked to explore. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it when when books have like a mystery within a mystery that you follow throughout the mm -hmm. rest of the series. Um, it would have been cool if maybe the guy at the diner, like if that would have stayed a mystery, like why he read so much and like, you could have actually grown with their love of each other throughout mm -hmm. the books as like a side story. That would have been like chef's kiss, an awesome side story to go along with the main character. Mm -hmm. For sure. So should we announce the book for next month? Yes, I actually already own it. <gasps> have you read it? I have not, no. Oh. So oh. I checked it out from the library. <laughs> it yep. is uh, Knit and Nibble, which are, no, not, yeah, no. it's the Knit and Nibble like, yes. series and it is Murder, She Knit. Yes, so Murder, Murder She Knit, Knit by uh, Peggy uh, Earhart. So this is mm -hmm. the first in the series. That cat totally looks like Cleo. Yeah, for sure. you. yeah, and so this looks super, super cute. Unraveling a deadly yarn. It says, since her only daughter left for college, widow pa uh, Pamela Patterson has kept busy as associate editor of a craft magazine and founder of the Knit and Nibble Knitting Club in quaint Arborville, New Jersey. Now she's trying out a new hobby: solving murders. So I did listen to the whole book today. <laughs> Um, but I won't share any spoilers. I'm going to read the book though for book club. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I, you know me, I wait until almost as late as in the month as I can to read it. Like I literally, I was at like 30% on Monday and I finished the book, um, by three o'clock Monday afternoon. Wow. So I literally just finished it two days ago. Good. It's all fresh. Yeah, all fresh, all fresh. Um, I thought the funniest line was the one that said, this is as boring as a fifth grade math class because I'm a fifth grade math teacher. <laughs> I got a giggle from that too because I taught fifth grade all subjects. And I was like, well, not necessarily wrong. Um, Murder She Knit is awesome. She has the arc. Nice. I have that book already too. Awesome. I have a few in this series, never read, love knit crochet books, and the covers are just too cute. They really are flipping adorable. I mean, I, that's the main reason why I bought this book was because of how flipping cute uh, the kitty cat yeah. was on here. So yeah, I knew nothing about the book. I was just like, it's a cute cover. Therefore, it should be read. <laughs> yes, agreed. April, I'm a knitting teacher outside of my history teacher life, and I love knitting mysteries. Oh, nice. Very, very nice. Love it. Well, I, I'm excited. So we yeah. will meet on the last um, Wednesday of uh, July. July. Yeah. To talk about this. Super, super, super excited. All right, guys. Well... This is the first year too that we we didn't build in any breaks for ourselves. No. Like we're gonna do every single month for all of 2021. Yes, yes. 
So I think since we were still in like pandemic mode, we're like, there's really nothing to plan, nowhere to go. Yeah, nothing, <laughs> nothing to, to do. do. Yeah, <sighs> basically. So yeah. All right, guys. Oh. Yeah, thank you guys so much for coming and joining us tonight. You guys are fantastic. And, you know, make sure to be subscribed and join on the Facebook group if you haven't already so that you can talk about cozies with everyone else and all that fun stuff. Yep. And don't forget, 4th of July this weekend, you could be picking out your books for Coz Week. Yeah, Coz Week next week, yeah. guys. If you don't know what that is, it's a readathon that I do every single year for my birthday, um, which is July 6th. So it's going to start July 5th and go to July 11th. I have all of the um, like reading challenges on my Instagram. It's in a pinned story. So you can go and check that out or my video explaining mm -hmm. what it is on my channel. Yep. And if you need examples, all of my books choices will be going up this Sunday. On the Yay! So excited. Have a great night, everyone.